So now we're going to talk about the three jump. This is one of the first basic jumps we teach in free skating. It's uh, a jump that will take off on one foot and will land on the other foot. And the key thing to remember in this one is that you'll also be turning whilst in the air. So it's a rotational jump. It's depending on which foot you are or which rotation you prefer to turn. You can turn to the left, going this way. Or if you prefer the other way, try it out maybe both ways just to check. You're going from turning to the right. So the first thing you want to remember is because I've rotated to the left for my whole career, I'm going to teach it that way. If you prefer to rotate it to the other, the other direction to your right, then please take everything I say and turn it around. So if, I'm take, if I say, tell you to take off of the left foot, then you're going to end up taking off of the right foot. But again, play around with it and see how you feel. Most people, including me, jump to the left and turn to the left in the air. But see how you feel. You may be one of those people that will decide they want to turn to the right. So, first thing for the three jump we're going to think about is the direction that we're going to go. This jump is a forward moving jump. Okay? You step into this jump whilst moving forward. A lot of the jumps we teach in ice skating go backwards. This is one of the only ones you'll see, apart from the bunny hop, that move forward whilst jumping. So, the other thing you want to also think about is when you step forward, you're going to be on an outside edge, on that one foot on an outside edge. So you want to be really comfortable over your skate and be comfortable especially standing on one foot on the ice. If you're not comfortable with your balance yet, I wouldn't advise doing this jump. But once you've got that balance, this is going to be quite easy for you. So as I said, you step forward onto that outside edge on one foot and the jump is going to be a half turn and jump all the way to backwards and you notice that I land on the other foot. So let's break that down a little bit even more. So I've pushed forward onto my, my left foot. I'm right here with a nice bent knee. You can see that my knee's bent as, because when you need to jump, of course, you need to bend your knees and straighten it to get yourself up into the air. The other thing you want to think about, the other thing that's going to help you jumping is your arms as well. Your arms, when you're jumping as high as you can, normally when you ask someone to jump as high as they can, they start with their arms in front, they pull them back, and they lift, try and get you up in the air. And it's exactly the same for this jump. So when we step onto our forward outside edge, they're in front. As we step forward, they go back along with my back leg here, you can see. As my leg comes through, my arms come through. So the free leg is working very much with my arms. Okay? As my leg goes back, this my right leg that I'm not standing on goes back, my arms go back. As my leg comes through, my arms come through. We can uh, separate jumps into three phases. You've got your takeoff, you've got your in air, and you've got your landing. So let's talk about the takeoff first. Your position that I want you to start off in, we're going to start this from standstill. We're going to have our feet together, but we're going to be in our T position. This is what I call the T position. With my left foot, my left heel connecting to the middle of my right foot, the inside of my right foot. Your arms are going to be together and in front of you, in the same facing the same direction that your left foot is facing. Now we're going to push forward, and as we push forward, our arms are going to come back behind us, so it's slicing right by our hips here. It's, you know, when you, when, you go to t when you ask someone to jump as high as they can on the floor, they start off in this position, their arms come back, and they come forward as they jump up, because you want everything to help you get up in the air. So in the same, in the same sense in this jump, we're going to start off forward. When we push onto our forward outside edge on the left foot, we're going to take the arms back. So let me go back here for a little bit. As I mentioned, we're going to push ourselves forward onto the forward outside edge. It's not going to be in a straight line. It's not going to be on an inside edge. It's going to be on an outside edge. So we will be curving to our left if we're on the left foot. So we've got our arms in front of us. We push forward onto our left outside edge with a nice bent knee. Look how nice and bent my knee is. Now notice that I'm also comfortable and balanced over the foot that I'm standing on. If I've got any wobbling and if I don't feel comfortable over that foot, I'm going to put my right foot down and start again because I really want to be comfortable going into this jump. When you're throwing yourself into the air, you've really got to make sure that you're, you've got complete balance over both of your skates. So the final phase of the takeoff, we've brought everything back and we're comfortable over our edge. It's everything coming through in order to initiate the jump. So the arms and the leg will come through together. Now notice how my arms are in front of me, but over my right foot. So when I come into this position, my arms will be over my right knee here. Now my leg is not straight. My leg is slightly bent. I like to think about it with the right toe being underneath the right knee. So it's not too big. You don't want it to be too big. You want everything to kind of stay underneath you a little bit here. So the last thing to think about when you're taking off is that you're taking up off the toe pick. You don't want to take off the blade. It starts off on the blade here, but as you take off, you go up onto the toe pick to push you up into the air. You have to think about using your knees, your hips, and your ankle. All three of those things are going to push you up into the air.
about our takeoff and how to get ourselves into the air. Once we're in the air, what do we need to think about doing? We're not jumping straight forward and not turning. We are actually turning half a turn for this waltz jump. You, so you will end up starting forwards and you'll be landing backwards. That's why this jump becomes a little tricky. Once you get the idea of it, once you get the hang of it, it'll, you'll find it very easy as well, hopefully. So, how do we get that rotation in the air? Well, as I mentioned, we're already on our outside edge on our takeoff. Our legs have come back, our leg has come back, our arms have come back. As we go up into the air, watch how I use my hips and my arms to pull myself around that half a turn. Okay, you're only going half a turn, but it's mainly the hips once you get up into the air that's going to pull yourself round. So you've got your edge, which is starting to hook you, which is already starting to create rotation. And then once you get up into the air, you use your legs and your arms to get you up in the air. And then once you're in the air, it's your hips to get you round it. So you've done a nice, easy half a turn. So if you're starting out with this three jump, you should think about doing it landing on two feet. So we're going to be here, jump up, land. Nice balance, nice knee bend when you land as well. Okay, so make sure you use those arms and legs as they come up and rotate and land on two feet. Something else you want to consider when you're in the air is to always keep your feet underneath you and your arms quite close to your body. If you end up trying to jump in the air with everything out like this, then you're going to have trouble landing it, especially when it comes to the time when we start to land it on one foot. The arms, when they're close to your body, it helps you rotate a little bit faster. So if you're struggling to get around that half a rotation, really try squeezing your arms in a little bit tighter. For this waltz jump, it's only a half turn, so you might find that you don't need the arms at all, but keep them nice and checked out in front of you here as you're rotating. So they're kind of on top of you, and then it's not one arm sticking out here and one arm sticking up here. You want complete balance. If they're symmetrical and in front of you, when we get to the jumps which start to rotate a little more, all we have to do then is pull them in nice and tight. All right, so we've talked about the takeoff position and we've talked about the in-air also. Now we're going to talk about the landing position, the final but also very important phase of a jump. Any jump that you do, this is going to be the same landing position and you want to think about several key things when you're doing this landing position in order for it to be successful. The first and most important thing for me would always be land on a nice soft bent knee when you're landing. All of those wobbles you've got when you've landing, you want to be soaked up by your shock absorber right here of a knee bend. So any ankle, ankle rocks you've got, and if your knee is completely straight, it's going to transfer into bigger movements in your upper body. Whereas if you bend your knee, they stop right there. And you're going to be going to think about being more stable when, you're on, when you've got a nice knee bend. Next thing is having your arms up. Okay, this is like your skater's version of your balance beam. Now you can notice when I'm doing this, I'm not completely square here, but you want to almost face a little bit of where you've just come from. So when I'm landing this jump, I'm going to be facing the right, just a little bit here. You can notice that my head is slightly to the right and my arms and chest are slightly to the right also. Very important things when you're landing this, this, on this position. So I already mentioned that we're taking off with the left foot and we're landing on the next foot. We're landing on the opposite foot. So if I'm taking off on the left foot, I'm landing on the right foot. What is the, the left leg doing in that case? That's called our free leg, and that's going to be stretched out at the back in a rigid position. Because the more rigidity we have with that leg, the more stable we're going to be in the rest of our body. We want to keep our core strong, our leg solid at the back, and our knee locked into position. So once we've hit a nice stable position, we can stay there. So if I demonstrate again, lock. Everything's stable. I've got no wobbles, no movements. So really, I could, I could keep going in that landing position until I run out of speed. So now we're going to look at some of the common mistakes of uh, things that I've seen when people are learning this jump. Um, I'd say that there are, there are several mistakes you can do in this jump, but at the same time, as long as you're getting round to backwards on this jump and being stable that's, and safe, that's the most important thing. So in order to make this jump quality, let's look at some of the things that can really help us and th some of the things you want to avoid. Um, we've mentioned that the free leg comes back and through on the takeoff. I see a lot of people trying to do it with a really straight leg. And as I mentioned, all that helps do in the air is get your feet wide apart and you want your feet underneath you. So when you land, your right foot's right underneath you and you've got complete stability over that right foot. Um, other things as well, still on the takeoff, is you want the timing of everything to be correct. So you want those arms going back with that free leg and the arms coming through with the free leg. I see some people kind of putting the arms and the arms go through and the leg comes through at different times and it all gets a little bit messy. You want everything to help you get up in the air at the same time. So also you want to think about that when you're on this outside edge, it's got to be a strong, nice, comfortable outside edge. I see some people start to lean out and jump it makes it a very awkward jump when you, when you end up on the inside edge. You've got to think about that the last thing you're coming off of 
is the toe pick. So if your foot's already rocked over like this, and you try and get off of the toe pick, it's going to send you in the wrong direction. We want all of the momentum of the jump to be moving forward, not to the side. So try and make sure you keep over a nice, comfortable outside edge. And also, talking about whilst we're still on the takeoff, try not to pre-rotate that body. When you step onto it, try not to do the rotation and jump already here. Because when it gets to doing a jump with more rotation, that's going to be so detrimental to your learning of the next jump. So try and keep your body reasonably square, if anything, slightly to the outside of the circle that we're creating so we can jump up and now my right side can come through.